been working closely with Mid Coast Council on some riverbank projects over the last couple of years. Council's been really great at preparing grant applications and undertaking environmental assessments. LLS is really strong with landholder networks and maintaining those connections with people that are living and working on the land. So we bring all those positive things together in the partnership and that enables us to get some really great outcomes. Faster alone, further together. Working with local land services is a way to pool resources and share each other's strengths in a way that we can get a lot more outcome for limited resources. Good clean water supply is really important to everyone that lives in the catchment. There's also agricultural benefits, habitat value uh, for fisheries and aquaculture industries. A big part of my role is providing advice to landholders and building their capacity as land managers. So they're able to implement practices that ultimately improve the environment, improve water quality. This can be as simple as erecting a fence to reduce the stock pressure in riparian zones and allow the native vegetation to re-establish. A good riparian buffer also offers a really good screen for nutrients coming off property. That's something most landholders can do. Put up a fence, exclude the stock, get some vegetation established on the riverbank and hopefully hold that riverbank in place. A lot of our catchment areas do have highly erodible soil, so in some of the catchments and rivers, you know, you see a lot more sediment going into the system than others. One of the significant bank protection projects we've done at Pampula involved installing around 650 metres of rock fillets on the inner tidal bench. The Pampula section are pretty significant high banks. When that falls in the river, it certainly contributes a lot to sedimentation and you know, poor water quality. What the rock does, it, it acts as a wave barrier to prevent boat wake and wind wave action from undermining the bank. Once established, you get sediment accumulating behind the rock and over time you'll see marine vegetation colonise these areas. So ultimately you end up with a, a large strip of mangroves uh, in behind the rock, going a long way to preventing further erosion along this stretch. Up here in the Manning, we're working on this project out at Coopernook on the Lansdowne River with the small family. Mandy and Scott live on the property, but their son Josh has been really heavily involved in developing the project and they've already done some really great things. We'd fenced the river banks, but the banks just weren't coming back, or especially the mangroves. There was, there was no vegetation that would, that would take hold. I started to do some research into what could we do. It's been really encouraging to see the landholder fence off the river banks and also do some weed control. They had a prickly pear infestation. And they've been really open-minded to trying some different techniques. Brian actually came to site with Chloe from Local Land Services. Brian had some contacts within Mid Coast Council. From there, we uh, put a project together, got involved with a local non-for-profit organisation called Ozfish, and we proposed the design that you see here today. We've been trialling different approaches to riverbank restoration, incorporating different materials like timber and oysters. So we have log fillets, so there's two logs at the bottom, one on top, and then they're pinned. So they're put into sections where the bank is starting to erode. We've also tried some hybrid techniques where we combine rock and timber, and that's appearing to work really well. Further upstream, there's some different designing where logs are placed straight out into the mud and they're, they're in a, a triangular shape, and then they're backfilled with cobble. We've been planting mangroves as well, and we'll do a bit more of that. The logs will form protection for any boat wash. The mangroves will grow behind or in between those logs. And then on top of the bank, we're gonna do some riparian planting as well. So we're replicating what would naturally happen as best we can, but then also providing protection. But that protection then will break down. So the logs eventually in 20 years time should no longer be there. And we'll be left with what is currently across the river. It's really great to have a broad group of partners. Like at this site, we've had the Recreational Fishing Trust provide a grant, working with Ozfish, Council, LLS, and the landholder, all combining their resources. That's a really key part of how we work. We've got this core relationship with Mid Coast Council, but both LLS and Council bring in all these other partners as well. And then we even branch out from that to bring in research organisations to evaluate what we do get expert advice, assess the whole estuary, prioritise where we're going to work so we can try and 
get the most out of those limited resources we've got for this kind of work. It's a big river and Big Coast Council's got a huge area. Got to make the most of those resources.